What is going on in my Houston Texans family? We are 0-3-1, the farthest that we've ever been from a victory. And it's getting kind of, you know, disappointing and kind of frustrating because now you need to start looking at the play callers, the coaches, and the higher-ups and saying, well, this team is much more worse than what we thought it was going into week one. We had a certain expectation for this offense and very high expectations from this defense, right? We said that this defense was going to be the bright spot of this team. I called it that just a few weeks ago. And we've been griping about the offense so much and the, you know, and the young uh, productivity of Davis Mills and Pep Hamilton and this offensive group. But this defensive unit maybe has been the most disappointing of the season because we didn't think it was going to be a crutch. When you look at the run defense, the worst in the NFL, Malik Collins and Roy Lopez are not stopping anything. And it's kind of disappointing because we were expecting a better year two from both these guys. With Collins, it was all right. You got that, you know, the year knocked off the rust from being on the Raiders. Now it's time to go back to your Cowboys days where you were a threat against the run and you were getting to the QB. And then you look at Roy Lopez. You started all 16 games last year. A surprise, a gem of where we, you know, got you in the fifth round. And, you know, Lopez has looked okay, but they are running all over us. John Gennard has disappeared this season. I think only one sack, two tackles for loss. Your best pass rusher, 37-year-old Jerry Hughes, who wasn't even on this team last year. And I think John Dugan knows that, right? He tweeted yesterday. He was like, I need to play better. We will play better. This city deserves this. And, yeah, we do, right? We've been through a lot of shit. And the simple fact is, like, these issues were had to be known. Don't even get me started about the linebacking court, which is maybe the worst we've ever seen. Christian Kirksey, Comrade Grugia Hill should not start next week. They're old. They can't defend against the run. They can't defend against the pass. When you look at number 51, you're small, you're undersized, and you're not good at the run. You're not good at the pass. Normally, you're good at one of them, and he is not. And Gruger, he was not good at anything right now for you. You started Blake Cashman, and he dropped the interception, and he got his bell rung, and he was out. You need to start looking at guys like Neville Hewitt, Garrett Wallow. Speaking of Hewitt, 100 tackles he had with the New York Jets. The guy plays special teams. If he's fast enough to be on special teams, then he's fast enough to be in coverage. That's just my opinion. Y'all let me know if I'm wrong. But this linebacking core, especially knowing that you gave one of the captains to Christian Kirksey, is just not where it needs to be. I don't want to see them starting anytime soon. They were an issue in week one, and they've been an issue, you know, so far. They can't cover. They can't stop the run. Poor John Owens is leading the league in tackles right now. Because honestly, any running back is just getting to our second level at ease. And that is just a huge disappointment because we were expecting a, you know, a Lovey Smith-led defense, right? We know this offense was going to be a work in progress. But don't worry because this, this defense led by veteran players and veteran coaching, and they cannot step up. When you look at the offensive side, right, there was at one point where I thought Davis Mills was going to be benched. You know, some might say that that 75-yard run by uh, by Damian Pierce absolutely saved him, and maybe it did. And he was able to come back and make some good plays. And Davis Mills had a good third quarter and, you know, a decent fourth quarter. And so he wasn't given the opportunity to come back and score again because his defense, yet again, failed to stop the run. And... You didn't even have 100 yards on the ground being the Chargers. But it was in key moments where Austin Eckler broke free. These run, these linebackers didn't know when the runner was coming. And on the same play, I think he converts a fourth and one. And then he breaks another one for a touchdown. The exact same play. Our linebackers not able to recognize when the run is coming. When you look at the offense, right, your only bright spot is, is, is number 31, Damian Pierce. He had a great day. Um, besides his big run, the O-line just wasn't blocking. I, uh, I think Landry Locker put out a stat yesterday where he said that um, 10 or 12 of his runs went for one yard or no gain. And once again, this coaching staff uses number 28 Rex Burkhead in big moments, right? They are so happy he got the touchdown, but there was a fourth and one, another fourth and one, where they didn't fool the Chargers defense, they didn't fool anyone, and Davis Mills got sacked. Speaking of Davis Mills, had a horrible half. His first deep ball 
was an interception and then got it going. You saw things in the third quarter and the fourth quarter where you said, I need to see more of this. This is this is the guy that we all thought could be something at the end of his rookie season. And he just hasn't put it together yet. Davis Mills has not played a full four quarters of football yet. And that is an issue. Another bright spot was Nico Collins, who had, you know, 80 something yards. Should have had a hundo if Davis Mills hit some, you know, in, in key moments and in some passes. Davis Mills has not looked good. And that is an issue. He has been a disappointment so far. You also need to start looking at Pep Hamilton. And Pep Hamilton, he's done some good things. He's definitely done some bad things. Some questionable things like the fourth and one with Rex Burkhead. It sucks when you're so close in every single game. Because you can argue that we could be 3-1 and one or 4-0. and oh, With just better offensive play. Mainly from your quarterback. But y'all let me know how you feel about this loss. It's things for me, as always. Go Texans. You guys have a very blessed day.